subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello, my friends. It's another SHSR on Joy Learning Channel. As you see me, then you know that we are coming to do economics. And you know what we do. We hold all other factors constant. Then we give our maximum attention to what we are going to talk about. It is another very interesting and equally important topic. This topic is a very good topic for WASI. It's a form two topic and I would want you to pay attention. Get your books, your pens ready. And we'll be using the calculator subsequently. So get that one too. So that when we get to that calculation aspect, we all can follow. So I'm your usual facilitator in economics, Sir Walter. And I bring to you the topic, market structures. This one will just be the part one of it. It's a very long topic, so we'll be treating it in series. This is the first part. Now, market structures. So by way of objectives, I would expect you, the student, after the lesson, to be able to define a market. Also, mention some forms of market structures. Then you talk about perfect competition market as one of the forms of market structures. So then we move on. What is a market? Think about it. I know your first thought of market is a place. You are imagining a place where they sell probably vegetables, where they sell clothes and what have you. I want to tell you this. That the definition of a market goes beyond it being a place. At this level, if you are defining a market and you talk about the fact that it is a place, you may not score the correct answer. The reason is that market goes beyond that. So then what is a market? Let's find out. A market is an arrangement that gives room for buyers and sellers to exchange goods and services. It is not a place, like I said, but an arrangement. Any kind of arrangement that will bring buyers and sellers together is a market. If you would bear with me, in the current dispensation that we find ourselves, you don't even need structures to have a business. Buying and selling is going on in the air or in the space. You, you, you can't even identify where it happens, but it does happen. For instance, you can order for a ride, maybe Yango, Uber or something, via the internet. So you order for a service and a person comes. You wouldn't necessarily walk to a place like the taxi rank to get it, like the way we do it in a traditional way. That is also a market. Now we try to order food, we try to order clothing, we try to order other things via the internet. We don't necessarily go to the shop. We don't necessarily go to a particular location to make the order. So that kind of platform, which is not really visible, also gives room for buyers and sellers to interact. And we would equally call that a market. So then when we talk about a market and you are referring it to a place, then you are limiting the definition of a market. So from now on, note that when we talk about the definition of market, we are looking at an arrangement that will bring buyers and sellers together to interact. And in their interaction, what is key is exchange. Buyers and sellers interact by exchanging goods and services. So that's the definition of market. Moving on. Now we talk about the forms of market. I would want to give you a general summary of some forms of market that you are expected to know. Then we focus on what 
we would have to delve deeper into as far as your level is concerned. So we start with this. We know what a market is. Buyers and sellers coming together to interact or to exchange goods and services. Now note that market as it is, is seen in two major ways or in two major categories. Namely, perfect and imperfect. So we are trying to say that a market can be a perfect market or an imperfect market. Now, when we say market is a perfect market, we are looking at that market with competition. So a perfect market has a characteristic feature, unique characteristic feature of competition. For a market to be perfect, one of the features is that there should be competition. It doesn't mean that all markets with competition are perfect market. No. There are some markets with competition that are not perfect market. We will understand subsequently. So like I was telling you, the imperfect market also has some competition. Then we have an imperfect market with no competition. So the point we have made is that market has two categories. We have the perfect market and the imperfect market. Then we move on to say that perfect market is a market with competition. The imperfect market will also have competition and some will have no competition. Take note. Now, the perfect market with competition or perfect market which has competition is known as PCM, meaning perfect competition market. So as the name suggests, the perfect market has competition in it. So we are talking about that perfect market with competition, which is called perfect competition market. Now, when we come to the imperfect market, we know that some of them have competition, others don't. Now, the perfect or the imperfect market with no competition is known as the monopoly market. The monopoly market is a market which has only one seller and many buyers. The seller is just one person and does not compete with any other person. That is why we, re we refer to this market as an imperfect market with no competition. It is an imperfect market because it does not satisfy many of the conditions of perfect market. We'll talk about the conditions of perfect market later. Now, when we come to the imperfect market with many competition, no, with competition, we have many of them, or we have many markets that would stand for imperfect market with competition. Now, let's go through them. We can have duopoly. Duopoly. Now, the word duo means two. So, when we have duopoly, it is a market with two sellers and many buyers. We've talked about monopoly, we've talked about duopoly. I know you are thinking of a market with three sellers, market with four sellers, yes. And you're asking yourself whether these markets exist. Well, to a large extent, these are theoretical in nature. In practical terms, they might not exist in its entirety. However, in some jurisdictions, these markets can exist. For example, if we talk about a monopoly market, you can be in a particular area. Let's say you are in a village where you just had light and there is only one outlet that sells retail credit. I'm talking about electricity credit. There is only one shop in the whole of the area. So when we talk about that particular area, that seller becomes a monopoly. Yes, but if you are looking at a monopoly in an entire country, you may not have it. Now to duopoly. What if in the same village, we have two of these sellers? Then that's a market known as a duopoly market. Then we move on to another market known as oligopoly. Oligo means few. So we are talking about few sellers and many buyers. So 
this one to some extent are very common especially when you come to the telecommunication industries you would get to a particular country in a whole country we have just three companies as telecommunication firms that is a typical example of oligopoly you can have some few companies operating airlines in a particular country that's an example then we have another one which is quite interesting mono sony mono means one and sony here we are talking about buyer yes we have a market which is an imperfect market where we have many sellers but just one buyer is that possible yes let me give an example in ghana so in ghana to a large extent the ghana cocoa board is the only legal buyer of cocoa so all those who produce and sell cocoa would have to sell to ghana cocoa board so that they can export it to other countries so in that particular situation we would call the cocoa market a monosony market to a large extent let me add that because it might not be 100 percent very well we also have the mcm meaning the monopolistic competition market monopolistic competition market we made mention of the fact that the monopoly market has no competition but if you are having a kind of monopoly market with competition in it that is a monopolistic competition market which market is that normally when certain commodities are sold in the industrial sense then we can have monopolistic competition let me give an example let us assume that all local tv stations in a particular country will come together on a particular platform where people will go and buy their satellite or the satellite then you can have all these stations to watch yet the various stations in the particular enclave will compete with each other so an example is the multimedia so in multimedia they have the digibox which has several tv stations on it to the bias it is just one company multimedia but the actual fact is that there are several firms in the multimedia competing with each other so you can have tv station a one firm tv station b another firm they are competing with each other so they appear as one seller to the buyers and that makes it monopoly in that sense yet the firms within it compete with themselves and that brings about the competition so that's how the monopolistic competition market works but we will not at this level treat all these market it is only fair for you to know what they stand for so at this level the market structures in focus will be the perfect competition market the monopoly market and the monopolistic competition market so we will not do anything on duopoly we will not do anything on oligopoly we are not doing anything on monosony we are only focusing on perfect competition monopoly market and the monopolistic competition market very well so then we begin with a perfect competition market pcm perfect competition market what is it it is a market with many buyers and many sellers with one prevailing market price so in this market there is only one prevailing market price there are many buyers there are many sellers there are other conditions that would make a market a perfect one so let's go through these conditions conditions for the perfect competition market there should be many buyers and many sellers as we've talked about there is only one prevailing market price as we've also talked about now listen the reason why this market should have many buyers and many sellers is the fact that we are looking at a particular market where the buyers are so many 
the sellers are so many that each buyer or each seller is buying small portion of the total quantity and selling small portion of the total quantity respectively available in the market let me break my statement down so we have many sellers selling a particular commodity each seller is expected to sell small quantities of that commodity because the sellers are many we have many buyers as well each buyer should buy small quantity of the total amount of quantities on display for sale the reason being that we don't want any situation where a buyer or a seller can influence the price so in a particular market if one buyer buys about 50 percent of the total output then of course that buyer will be able to influence price if we have a seller who sells about 60 percent of the total output then that seller can influence price in the perfect market it shouldn't exist so there should be enough buyers and enough sellers so that none of them will be able to influence price if we are able to do that we'll be able to achieve the second point where we said there is only one prevailing market price and this prevailing market price should be fixed by the independent and invisible forces of demand and supply such that if the commodity has a higher demand the price will shoot up if the commodity will have a low demand the price will go down if the commodity will have a high supply the price will go down and if the commodity has a low supply the price will go up all other things being equal I hope that is clear very well we move on to the third point it says that there is perfect knowledge about the market for a market to be a perfect market there should be a perfect knowledge perfect knowledge means each and every player in the market be it a seller or a buyer should know fully the information concerning the prevailing market price and other conditions in the market at least before anybody goes to the market to buy or sell the person should know the prevailing market price that would ensure that each buyer is buying at the market price and each seller is selling at the prevailing market price there is free entry and free exit to this market there is free entry and free exit to this market the point is that as you wish if you're a buyer you can enter that market and leave that market anytime you want at pleasure or at wish sellers can also leave the market and join the market anytime as we said with our first point there should be many buyers and many sellers so if we restrict entry how do we ensure many buyers how do we ensure many sellers so you would realize that this particular point of free exit and free entry is quite related to the other conditions moving on goods sold are homogeneous when we say goods are homogeneous it means the goods are the same in appearance the same in quality the same in content the same in every characteristics that exist with the commodities so for example if you take a coca-cola bottle and another coca-cola bottle with the same liter that is a clear situation of homogeneous product when you take pepsi and coca-cola they might have the same liters as far as the content is concerned but you would have product differentiation and that is not 
homogeneous product. Though they all have cola as the raw material, their taste may be close, but they may not be the same. So when we talk about homogeneous, note that it is different from similar product. And that is what should be sold in the perfect competition market. There shouldn't be any government intervention. Like we said, prices are fixed by the independent and invisible forces of demand and supply. If government comes in to fix price, it defeats that particular argument of having the perfect competition market with a specific condition. So government interference is not allowed in this particular market. Very well. Having gone through these conditions, I'm not saying these are all the conditions, but these are major ones. Do you see any market being a perfect competition market in the real sense? Well, the answer is this. The perfect competition market looks more theoretical than empirical. When we say it is more theoretical than empirical, it means it is more like a paperwork than the reality. However, we have some markets that are closer to it. For example, is the forex market. So when you give Ghana as an example, the forex market sell and buy homogeneous product. If it is one dollar, one dollar doesn't change. One CD doesn't change in appearance and in all. The price of dollar, the price of CD are being influenced by the forces of demand and supply and it cut across the whole country. Of course, we try as much as possible to ensure perfect knowledge by putting this information out there. That is why you notice that every evening there is business and financial news where these rates are announced. You go to the nearest financial institutions, the rates are displayed there for everybody to know. So you would notice that to a very large extent, the Forex market can be likened to the perfect competition market, but it is not a perfect case. Good. Now let's watch this illustration. We've talked about the fact that with a perfect competition market, there is one prevailing market price. So then if I have my quantity and this as my price, and we assume that price is 10, then it means if I sell or buy the first quantity, I'll buy it at 10. If I buy the second quantity, I'll buy it at 10 CDs. If I buy the third quantity, it will be bought at 10. If I sell the fourth quantity, it will be sold at 10. Same applies to the fifth quantity. Very well. If you remember, in our previous meeting, we talked about how to calculate total revenue. Let's see if we can calculate total revenue here. Total revenue will be the price times quantity. So the price, which is 10 times the quantity 1, in this case, gives us 10. The second one, 2 times 10 is 20. 3 times 10 is 30. 4 times 10 is 40. 5 times 10 is 50. Having done that, let us try to find the marginal revenue, which is a change in total revenue over the change in quantity. We, the first one, if we can only find the first one when we assume that the total revenue for the previous one is zero. So let us assume that the previous one is zero and find it. If that is the case, then our first total revenue is 10. Sorry, marginal revenue is 10. The second marginal revenue will be 20 minus 10 over 2 minus 1, and that also gives us 10. The third one, 30 minus 20 over 3 minus 2, it gives us 10. The fourth one, 40 minus 30 over 4 minus 3. Please check whilst we do it. It will give us 10. The fifth one will also give us 10. Let us find the average revenue to see what happens. Now, the average revenue is the total revenue over the output. 
total revenue 10 over output 1 gives us 10 20 over output 2 gives us 10 30 over output 3 gives us 10 40 over output 4 gives us 10 50 over output 5 gives us 10 I want you to notice this trend you would realize that price is 10 throughout marginal revenue is 10 throughout average revenue is 10 throughout the fact that we have one prevailing market price in the perfect competition market would make us have our price equating to marginal revenue which is equal to average revenue so note that in the perfect competition market the price is equal to marginal revenue and it is equal to average revenue price is equal to marginal revenue and is equal to average revenue in the perfect competition market note that so then in an illustration or in a diagram where this place will represent revenue and this is output we know that from output one two three four five up to the tenth output or whatever we all have 10 as our revenue be it marginal average or total eh, sorry marginal average or price so then when we join these points together we get a horizontal line like this so we can call this one the mr curve which is the same as the ar curve which is the same as the price so by way of diagram if you draw something like this it represents the perfect competition market note that the perfect competition market has its marginal revenue curve the same as the average revenue curve and it is parallel to the output axis i hope you are flowing great having noticed this let's talk about the equilibrium of the perfect competitor now one unique feature of the perfect competitor is that since we have to sell at the prevailing market price we call the perfect competitor a price taker he's a price taker note the equilibrium is the situation where marginal cost and marginal revenue of the firm meet and the marginal cost is rising if you remember when we talked about profit determination and we use the marginal cost marginal revenue approach we mentioned this now let us illustrate it we've already talked about the fact that the perfect competition market has mr and ar the same and it is parallel to the output axis like this and this is revenue now we have to draw our mc curve from our lesson in the cost theory we learned that marginal cost is u-shaped like this so this is mc now we notice that at this point let's call it point a which gives us output one mc meet mr this point let's call it point b output two that point two mc is equal to mr but we are saying the equilibrium is a point where mc is rising and that is point b why are we choosing point b over point a if you can recall in our lessons for theory of production we mentioned the fact that stage two is a rational state to produce because that is where profit is maximized and we made mention of the fact that the profit is maximized at the point where total output is highest so the highest total output gives us the maximum profit and the same applies to this we have two outputs which of these outputs is the maximum obviously it is the q2 and the perfect competition market is such that the more you sell the more you make profit that is why we choose point b because it has the maximum output of the point that mc will meet mr and that is the same point where mc is rising so then it is necessary to note that at equilibrium marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue 
But it is sufficient to add that at that same point, marginal cost should be rising. Great. We move on. Now to the short run analysis of the perfect competitor. We said that the short run is the period where at least a factor of production is fixed. Now in the short run, the perfect competitor could experience supernormal profit, normal profit or subnormal profit. In profit determination, we talked about these profits and we said the supernormal profit is positive profit, what we normally call profit. The normal profit is break even, that one you have zero profit. Subnormal profit is loss, actually. But we said that in economics, any result you get after sales is your profit, be it negative, positive, or zero. So then, we talk about supernormal profit. It is also known as positive profit or real profit. That is the profit we all call as profit. It is obtained in the situation where price or average revenue is greater than average cost at equilibrium. You have to add this. We always find the profit at the equilibrium. So when we locate the equilibrium and that point, you see average revenue or price greater than average cost, then we have supernormal profit. Let's try to draw. Now, when you are drawing supernormal profit, the trick is that, note that the minimum of the average cost is always below the price line. The first thing you do is you draw your price line, and this is the price line. MR is equal to AR. You know, it stands for the price. This is revenue to cost because we are drawing both revenue and cost curves. After drawing this to depict your perfect competition market, you draw your average cost. You know, we are comparing average cost to price or average revenue. So there's a need to draw average cost. And I'm saying the trick is that for supernormal profit, you draw your average cost in such a way that the minimum of it will be below the price line like this. So this is my average cost. We already have our marginal revenue. There is a need to have our marginal cost so that we can locate the equilibrium. And as we learned in our cost lessons, we said that marginal cost always cuts the minimum of the average cost. No, this is marginal cost. After drawing the marginal cost, we look for the point where marginal cost meets marginal revenue, and this is it. And call that equilibrium. So automatically the price at that equilibrium becomes a equilibrium price. And when you draw this line down to the quantity axis, it gives us the equilibrium output. Now the same line, when that quantity line touches the AC curve, that will give us our AC or, or average cost. You know, this line touches the AC curve at this point, and you draw a line to this axis since we are measuring the revenue and cost at a, vert a vertical axis. That gives us our average cost. Now, if you have this zero to price, compare that to zero to average cost. Which one is greater? Obviously the price is greater than average cost. So the price, which is the same as average revenue, is greater than average cost. And that satisfies the condition of supernormal profit. So then supernormal profit, actually, the real profit we are talking about is in this shaded portion. This is where you have the profit. Great. Now we move on to normal profit. Normal profit is achieved when price is equal to average cost at equilibrium. When price is equal to average cost at equilibrium. So that one too, we try to draw it. 
please draw with me you have your cost and revenue at the vertical axis quantity at the horizontal axis always you draw your price line when you are talking about perfect competition market that's your mr is equal to arp now the trick with normal profit is that the minimum of the ac this time around is tangent to the price line it is tangent to the price line like this so the minimum should touch the price line then we draw mc to pass through that minimum so we have our mc meeting mr at that particular point and that is the equilibrium automatically this becomes our equilibrium price and when you draw this down we have our equilibrium quantity now this quantity line touches the ac at the same point where the price is and therefore this time around we see that price is equated to the average cost and that satisfies the condition for normal profit so remember the trick that ac's minimum is tangent to the price line and that gives us a, a, a normal profit now move on to subnormal profit this will be the situation where the average cost is greater than price so we talked about supernormal profit having the ac below the price line normal profit has ac tangent to the price line so obviously subnormal profit will have the ac or the average cost minimum above the price line so when we are drawing we we'll have our cost slash revenue output we we'll draw a price line mr is equal to ar you draw a ac this time around you notice that the minimum is above the price line we draw mc to cut that minimum so then we locate our equilibrium student will be tempted to think that this point is the equilibrium where mc is cutting ac no always be mindful to know that the equilibrium is the point where mc meets mr so if this is our mc curve and this is our mr curve they meet at this point instead and that becomes our equilibrium so automatically this becomes our equilibrium price and when we draw the line down it becomes our equilibrium quantity now note that this equilibrium quantity line is not touching the ac so we would have to draw it or project it upward to touch the ac and when it touches the ac we measure it at the vertical axis and this becomes our ac so with this from zero to pe and from zero to ac the obvious is noticed that our ac is greater than price and since our ac is greater than price the condition of subnormal profit is achieved so that is how we draw subnormal profit so actually this space is the loss take note let us have an illustration aside drawing the curves you should also know how to read data response from the curve or you should be able to read some data from the curve now we have this particular curve on your screen it has ac mc ar is equal to mr and this time around we have figures we can easily locate the equilibrium to be this point so from there we we'll know the equilibrium price we we'll know the equilibrium quantity we can easily locate the ac yes now let's see some questions under it it says what market is this what market is this we are talking about perfect competition market so you know that this is obviously the perfect competition market but note that the reason why this is a perfect competition market is the fact that the price 
is equal to the marginal revenue and it's equal to the average revenue. So any time you see price equated to marginal revenue is equated to average revenue, then we are talking about a perfect competition market. Next question. Which time period is the market operating in? It will be the short run because that's what we are talking about, the short run period, where we have supernormal, normal, and subnormal profit. What is the equilibrium price and quantity? By inspection, you can give me the answer. Having noticed that the equilibrium is the point here, our equilibrium price is straightforward 7, and our equilibrium quantity is straightforward 600. So, the next question. What is the total revenue to the producer? We know the total revenue formula already, which is price times quantity. So, at the equilibrium, the price is 7, the quantity is 600. What we only have to do is to multiply them. So total revenue is price times quantity. The total revenue here will be 7 times 600. And 7 times 600 will give us 4,200. And that becomes our total revenue. Very simple. Now, what is the total cost incurred? We know we have different forms of calculating total cost. Sigma MC, AC times output, price times output, and all that can also give us total cost. But we look at the information available and we use it. So here, we have our average cost. You know this line touches the average cost at this point and that is 4. We have our average cost to be 4 and still our output is 600. So then we can easily calculate the total cost which will be 4 times the 600. Now let's do it. So total cost in this case becomes the average cost times quantity. So total cost is 4 times 600 and our 4 times 600 will give us 2400 as our total cost. Now we move on. The next question states that we should calculate our profit, the type of, and we should also talk about the type of profit. We know our total revenue, we know our total cost. Let's see them. Total revenue is 2,400, total cost is, sorry, total revenue is 4,200 and total cost is 2,400. We know profit to be equal to total revenue minus total cost. So then we have 4,200 minus 2,400. And our answer, 4,200 minus 2,400 will be 1,800. And that's a, that's a positive profit. So we know that this profit is positive, and for that matter, it would be a, a supernormal profit. Supernormal profit. Good. So when I give you a question, or when you see a question in this particular form, you should be able to do it. It is that easy. And you should be able to draw the curves. By inspection, you can even know what type of profit is this. You just locate the minimum of the AC and locate the price line. You'll notice that the minimum of the AC is below the price line. And that will tell you that it is super normal profit. So today, we've gone through some forms of market structures and we made our focus on the perfect competition market and the perfect competition market has certain conditions where we talked about that there's one prevailing market price many buyers and many sellers we also said there's free entry free exit 
we also said there is no government interference and the goods sold there are homogeneous in nature. There we made mention of the fact that in the perfect competition market, with regards to the short run period, firms in that market will experience either supernormal profit or normal profit or subnormal profit. That is, firms in that market in the short run can make real profit or break even or even make loss. Then we illustrated with diagrams what the supernormal profit is, what the normal profit is, and what the subnormal profit is. Then we also solved some questions there. Now for me to know if you really understand what we've done, Let's go through these evaluation questions. Give three conditions of the perfect competitive market. We just talked about them. Write them down and solve them. The next question. With the aid of diagrams, explain supernormal profit, subnormal profit, and normal profit. Write them. With the aid of diagrams, explain supernormal profit, normal profit, and subnormal profit. The last question. Differentiate between the monopoly market and the perfect competition market. Yes, I know some of you will be complaining to say we've not done the monopoly market. But I explained the monopoly market in my introduction. Where I said the monopoly market is a market with one seller and many buyers. How is that different from this market? So you can talk about the fact that in the perfect competition market, there is... Or there are many buyers and many sellers. Then, most of the conditions we've talked about in the perfect competition market does not exist in the monopoly market. You can't have one prevailing market price there. There is no competition there. Yes. So you can mention some of these and make away with a question. So friends, I hope you've had a wonderful time don't just watch the videos or don't just follow us but make notes and revise your notes get some past questions and other questions from the internet solve them so that you would have these concepts at your fingertips so that on the day of accountability you'll be able to give your maximum best and have the desired grade, which is A, A1. I wish you all the best until we meet the next time. I have been your usual facilitator, Sir Walter. Bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.